to go, oh, we used to go to a place that uh, was called Kaiju Peak. We don't have big, uh, we don't have bays in the island of Pico. Mm -hmm. When the big boats come there, they have to, they have to stay way outside, and then the gasoline launchers go out there to meet the boats and bring the people and bring the cargo. So uh, we used to go to Kaiju Pico to get our fish. And uh, one day, I was a little girl, but when I did that, I was really small. And I went to get, my mother sent me to get fish, and it was quite a ways, you know, down the river Kaiser Peak, from Kaiser Peak to where my mother, we lived, was quite a ways. And I had to do all that walking. I'd take my basket on my head, and I'd go over there and get this fish. And one day, a neighbor saw me go by, and she said, Oh, Ivarish, why not some good things you should charge? So I said, yes. Uh, I'll, be, I'll do it. And you know, I'd go fast, I'd walk fast, I was all alone and I would get anxious because, you know, you had no ice. That fish, uh, we had to rush home with it for my mother to clean it and salt it so we could eat it for lunch. And uh, so I brought this fish for this lady and you know what I did? I stopped at a place where, uh, uh, although the coast range is mostly high, you can't go to the water unless you just go up on rocks. But this place, was level, almost level with the Estrada, with the highway. Mm -hmm. And you know what I did? I got the smart idea of going over there and putting the fish in the cool water, you know, for a little while. And then I'd put it back in the basket, and I'd put the basket on my head, and home I'd go. But you know what happened? The tide came in. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the tide came in, and they scattered my fish all over the water there, and I had a hard time to pick them up because I had to give that fish to that lady, oh. and then I give. I had to give take all that amount Did of you get fish them all to. Then? Yeah, I got them all, but oh. they were all floating on top. So now I had to do some fishing and tall <laughs> fishing too, because I have to. I had to what take that money as well to that poor lady, you know. Uh, let me see. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a cute story. You never told me that. Your story. mother used to take you to Bayal on the boat. Huh? Oh well, yes, and when Nana you was uh, little, Nana still has a weak stomach sometimes. But uh, I couldn't think of the boat. Oh, uh, my mother would take it to the island of Fayal, and the ocean was very rough between those two islands. And um, Fayal was the main where you fought. We'd get up real early in the morning, Diane. My mother would get up. It was dark, real early in the morning. Or maybe we'd leave in the evening. And we'd take things in our heads. I'd take a little basket, my mother a big basket, whatever we were taking over there to sell or to give away or something. And we had to walk all that distance. I don't remember how many kilometers. There is um, eighteen miles. A, kil a kilometer is less than a mile, Diane. And uh, so, uh, as soon as I began to think of getting to that port and seeing that port rock and rock and rock, <laughs> my stomach would begin to get my stomach began to rock too. <laughs> And you know what my mother had to do? I couldn't eat any of the lunch she took. She'd have to buy me a fresh egg. I was to go to some lady's house and ask her to sell her an egg or something. And she'd beat it up and I'd drink it. And that was the way I got uh, nourishment. I got nourishment to, to be able to travel, you know. And then on the boat, you can just imagine what happened. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was seasickness, and a half and three quarters, like Grandpa says. And sometimes the ocean was real rough too. Sometimes, you know, Diane, uh, we uh, the, those smaller boats, you know, they come up to the uh, uh, come up to the to the wharf, but uh, but they go up and down. They go way down in there, and then when the 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 wave come in, well, the men were ready to grab us or the baskets we had, and then he off we'd go. And they hoist the sail, and the boat would go just, oh, just like that. Mm -hmm. The edge of the boat was right down on the water. Mm -hmm. And there, you know, we were just at the mercy of those men. And they were, oh, they were so clever. As soon as the wind was a bit strong, they'd take that thing down so fast. And then the thing would straighten up. Of course, we couldn't stay there on top of the water and just wave it's back and forth. Rain. We'd have to go, mm -hmm. see? We'd have to go. But uh, as soon as the uh, wind would calm down a little bit, they hoist the sail again, and pretty soon you get over there. Sometimes you can't get in. Sometimes the boats, well, you either have to go back or I don't know. They lost one boat between those two islands, Pico and Fayal. The people were all drawn, but that's the only one of all the years that I know that they traveled back and forth. That's the only one.
And so they, they're, they're really very clever to handle those. How uh, often but now they have the gasoline launches and they are... How little. often did you go there? Oh, well, my mother had to go. Our, our corn would give out because we didn't have enough land to raise corn, so she'd have to go over there and buy corn, you know, mm -hmm. sacks of mm -hmm. corn. And uh, we'd go How over there. How did you get the corn home then? Oh, well, um, uh, there's... Um, well, there's uh, people that go back and forth there that you already yeah, I kind of forget how my mother used yeah. to. Cart. They have ox carts, you oh, know, oh, in, yeah. there. Okay. in those days they did. Well, why, should she start winding up and telling how she came to this country then? And that oh, would be but that doesn't belong part. to Pico, though, does it? That doesn't belong to Pico. Yeah, that I'm story. <coughs> how you came here and how you were so strict with your religious ideas. And Oh, well, <laughs> but that doesn't belong over there. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, our, some uh, we had good dishes. My mother had a good set of dishes. I have a few bowls at home, the Sacramento there, that were just like these dishes she had for her wedding. And when I went back there 10 years ago, they, the kids still, my nephews and nieces, still had some of those dishes. They took real good care, and my mother had some chairs made, they were real pretty. They were not the color of this piano. They were a little lighter than this piano. But, you know, they got, li uh, they got um, uh, well, rough and everything, so they had them painted, but they still had them. And the little house is still stands there, just the way it was when yeah. I was there, little Your girl. House. It still stands Your there. House. Two yeah. rooms and a kitchen, that's all we had. Your yes, house our house. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, the and then there's a barn. My father, before he died, he had oxen, and he had a, a uh, he uh, ground his own corn with the, uh, and wheat with the, those oxen, and that barn is still there. I was born in that barn because the little house wasn't complete yet. You were, and I was born in that barn. <laughs> and then my father died. Well, everything then went to pieces because we had to sell the oxen. We couldn't we couldn't use them. We were just little kids. And let's see. How now. many kids were there all There together? were three of us, my brother and sister and I, and my mother. That was the family after my father died. And I don't remember uh, anything about my family on his side, because my father was in Brazil, and uh, he didn't, um, uh, he didn't, com the, the, the climate didn't agree with him down there, but he came home and married my mother. And uh, one time he, he had to work. Course. He had to work very hard, you know, and he got cold, and um, went into pneumonia, and he died. And so we were left to uh, my no father had to be it. father and mother, and we uh, from the time we were little bits of kids, we had to help our mother, little bit, six years old, seven years old, we had to work, and you know, going out in the country and sp and uh, working hoeing. Corn was fun. Oh, and there was another funny thing we used to have to do. Maybe they'd have a piece of land as big as this uh, house here and the yard. And they'd sow wheat there because for our own use, because feast days we had white bread. Mm -hmm. And then s when my mother made cornbread, she mixed in order, because the corn uh, flour is kind of rough, you know, even here it's kind of rough. And my mother used to take... Um, uh, my mother used to take white flour and mix it with the corn flour so that the uh, the the bread would go would keep together. And uh, one thing that we'd have to do, little bits of kids we were, we'd get up on a little hill, and they'd make us. Uh, I can't describe this, but this was funny. They have bamboo back there, and they took take this bamboo and make wheels, and they put it on a, a handle, and you turn it around like this and make an earth an unearthly noise. You know, you know why? We'd have to do it because the birds, there's a lot of birds back there. They would eat every bit of the corn, uh, I mean every bit of the wheat. <laughs> if we didn't go out there, and then we'd put um, scarecrows out there. My mother would make a cross like this with sticks and dress it up with rags, and it looked like a man or a boy out there, and so the birds were afraid and they'd go away. And we'd go out there and, and make this awful noise with that bamboo uh, wheels that we had, you know. Um, okay. Um, when I was 14 years old, well, Uncle Joe lived over here. You never met Uncle Joe because he died before you got big enough. But he was my mother's brother. He came from back there when he was a boy 17 years old. 
By the way, uh, before he came, my grandfather had been on the, over here on this coast on a whaling vessel. And my grandfather came ashore, and he had a gift that he understood land. He could say, this land is good, and this is no good. And if he'd have come ashore and, uh, um, and bought that land in those days because it was she cheap, why, well, your grandmother might have been, might have had been well off, and then she'd have something to divide you, divide with you. But uh, anyway, we went back home, and he expected to come back over here, grandfather, my mother's brother, uh, father. But uh, somehow he didn't come back, and he married my grandmother. And uh, oh, my grandmother was, they were just the sweetest people. And, uh, but um, they had four children. One was Uncle Joe, this man, one was my mother. And the other was uh, Joe Terra's father. There was two boys and two girls. And the other two was Uncle Joe and uh, a sister that never came over here. She lived back there. And that was Marie Ponce, and you don't know Marie Ponce either. No, she, she's my cousin. She lives in San Mateo. And so my Uncle Joe only had one little child, but he was born already dead. And the doctor said they couldn't have any more children. So Uncle John and Carrie were very lonely. And they wanted my mother, being that she was a widow and very poor, would she send one of us to come and live with them and go to school? So my sister was 19 months older than I am. She said, you go and I stay. And in those days, you know, <laughs> well, it was fun to travel as immigrants because, Diane, we didn't know a word of English. <laughs> so um, we didn't have any lunch to, in the, uh, on the train. We couldn't go to a restaurant, we wouldn't know how. And I don't think the train would stop long enough anyway. We didn't know how to buy sandwiches or anything. So one of the boys, there, the train was full of people, immigrants, you know, and the boat too, oh, a lot of them. And uh, so we'd send one of the boys to one of the grocery stores and buy. And all he'd have to do is see bread over there and he'd point to the bread. <laughs> he'd see the cheese over here and he'd point to the cheese. And of course we got, we had money, American money with us. We couldn't buy it with Portuguese money, you know. Mm -hmm. And so he'd come into the train, we were so hungry, you know. So we'd just devour that bread and that cheese or whatever and canned fish too. Sometimes he'd buy sardines. And uh, we'd all pitch in and give the money, and he'd go and buy the food, and that's the way we came. And one time on the, on the train, I was so sleepy, I was so tired, and I lay by the window, and when I woke up my hair, I had lots of wavy curls all over my head. And when I woke up, the wind had brought in the dust, not fine dust, almost a sand, and I was all covered with it. Yeah. Oh, we were a sight when we got in California. And when I came, I landed in San Francisco in a Portuguese hotel, and then Uncle Joe came after me. Well, no, they put me on the train to San Jose, and Uncle Joe got on the train, and I'd never seen Uncle Joe, only see his picture. But I brought the picture with him, and when he came in the train, I recognized him, and I guess he had pictures of us, and he recognized me.